At first glance, multispectral and radar images often appear very similar. However, the two underlying imaging systems differ fundamentally from each other. To properly evaluate satellite images, there are some things you need to know. The function of multispectral sensors can be compared to that of a human eye. The sensor measures, just like the retina of the eye, the intensity of reflected light in different wavelengths. Radar sensors, on the other hand, emit their own long wave, microwave pulses, and receive the microwaves reflected by objects. But how does this echo actually become an image in the end? And in general, a look at the electromagnetic spectrum shows us that important properties like colors, temperatures, or plant activities cannot be measured in the microwave range. So, what do radar sensors actually measure? Let's first look at how a radar system actually works. Radar. This stands for radio detection and ranging and is often translated as location and distance measurement using radio waves. Typically, radar technology can be used to track ships at sea or airplanes in the sky, for example. Since the direction from which a transmitted signal is backscattered is known, the distance to the object can be determined by the time it takes for the signal to travel at the speed of light from the transmitter to the object and back. These properties also allow radar satellites to measure the reflection and thus the characteristics of various objects on the Earth's surface. By measuring the distance, these measured points can be spatially assigned, thereby creating an image of the Earth's surface. With radar, you can locate objects. But how can they be distinguished? In addition to the distance, the radar sensor on the satellite also measures how much of the microwave signal it emits is scattered back to it. Different surfaces do not scatter the microwaves uniformly, but rather very differently, that is, diffusely back. And so, only a fraction of the transmitted microwaves returns to the radar sensor. This scattered signal is referred to as backscatter. The roughness of the surface that the pulse encounters significantly determines how it is scattered back. From an almost smooth surface, it is almost completely deflected in another direction, and only a very small portion of the signal returns. A rougher surface, on the other hand, scatters the pulse wave in many directions, allowing the sensor to receive a stronger signal. However, there are more of these effects. A calm water surface, for example, reflects almost the entire signal in another direction. A moist ground, on the other hand, increases the backscatter. The uneven orientation of the leaves. In the canopies of deciduous trees, the signal scatters differently than the uniform structure of a wheat field. And that's why each pulse signal contains information about the surface from which it was scattered. But how does the type of backscatter and the measured distance become an image? The pulse always propagates at the speed of light and must cover the distance from the sensor to the object and back. The time a signal takes, and thus the distance of the detected object to the satellite itself, is important so that the signal can be spatially assigned to a point on the Earth's surface, and thus to a point in the image. For this, the system can distinguish the individual pulses. When it receives a pulse, it knows exactly when it sent it, and how long it was in transit. To always be able to assign a signal to a specific point on the Earth's surface, the radar sensor is not oriented vertically downward, like most optical sensors, but rather at an inclined angle to the side. If this were not the case, the signal from some points on the Earth's surface would take the same time to reach the sensor, and they could not be spatially separated from each other. The lateral angle ensures that each signal takes a different amount of time to return to the sensor, 
and thus can be clearly assigned to a position relative to the satellite. However, this arrangement can also lead to problems. For instance, a large object such as a mountain can obscure part of the Earth's surface and makes this area invisible to the sensor. A radar shadow is created behind the object. Such phenomena must be considered when evaluating radar data. The received radar echo provides information about the distance of objects relative to the sensor as well as the strength of the backscatter. How an image is created from this is a tricky matter that we want to explore in a separate video. For simplification, let's first assume that the sensor captures the objects in a line. The stronger the signal, the brighter it is depicted. The distance of the objects to the satellite provides information about their position on this line. However, since this process is constantly repeated as the satellite moves, these pieces of information can gradually be assembled into an image. A radar system thus uses the strength of a signal to measure characteristics of the Earth's surface. Because the nature of the surface alters the signal strength that the sensor measures. Using the time it takes for the signal to travel from the sensor to the object and back, the distance can also be calculated and the signal can be spatially assigned. As the satellite moves, the sensor collects two-dimensional surface information in this way. From this, images of the Earth's surface can be generated, which at first glance are comparable to the recordings from multispectral satellites. However, they contain entirely different information due to the wavelengths used and are not dependent on time of day or cloud cover. Shall we take a look? Let's review what we've learned at the end with an image from the area around Frankfurt Airport. In these helicopter shots, we discover structures such as grass areas between the paved runways, buildings, scattered trees, and even a larger forest area in the background. When we compare these images with the radar image, we quickly understand what can or cannot be detected in a radar image. As we have learned, a radar cannot measure wavelengths of visible light. The image can indeed be colorized, but these colors do not correspond to our usual perception. Dark areas in the image are not necessarily dark in reality. Instead, they scatter the signal almost entirely in another direction and the sensor receives hardly any signal back from this point on Earth. This can be clearly seen on the smooth, asphalted runways, which in reality vary in brightness. In the radar image, they appear almost uniformly dark. The rivers Rhine and Main also remain black, as most radar signals are reflected by the water and do not return to the sensor. The more of the emitted signal returns to the sensor, the brighter the respective point in the image becomes. Thus, the diffusely scattering grass areas between the runways are already significantly brighter, but are surpassed by the surrounding forests. And the vertical surfaces of the buildings scatter a very large portion of the signal back. When interpreting radar images, one must detach from their usual visual habits and think much more in terms of structures rather than colors.